love don't leave on the cross. Oh, no. Charge that to me, baby. Oh, no. But it's all gravy. Hey, baby. Shots getting popped. The cops shut down the party. Jeans side low. No smoke out of the We've got a lot for y'all. Wish I don't love us. Great. And do you find that there are a lot of accidents now uh, more um, in the rural areas? Because I noticed that there's a lot of accidents lately. Um, okay. Do you find more inner city? Um, I mean, I think that I sort of look at it as automobiles are dangerous. Yes. And sometimes operators behind the wheel aren't exercising caution, especially with cell phones. And I believe that accidents happen everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the winter months, it's very hard because of the snow and the ice. And even if you think you're an experienced driver, it's the, the ice, you, you can't predict where the ice is. Absolutely. So. And when they say that a car is a lethal weapon, I agree. it most surely is. And then today also, it seems like because the cars are not made out of as much. No. The material is now you can push it push it in with your finger you can that you there can. are a lot more accidents that are fatal or the, uh, there are um and now i did uh happen to go to a sort of a seminar an instructional seminar mm -hmm. um, at the fire station and they actually are having a difficult time keeping up with technology and how to get us out of the cars because wow. and they actually have to know how to use the jaws of life and how to cut through what in order to get us out of cars which is also kind of scary for them but something right. we normally wouldn't think about right absolutely so um but i i agree with that but the one thing that the firemen did tell me is that sort of the capsule that, that we are in mm -hmm. is stronger but the outside is made to disperse so that is true. Where before it was more the outer the outer part right. was made of metal, and the inside wasn't wasn't didn't really hold us. Right. So something neat that that they are starting car companies are starting to do for us. Absolutely. And the uh, airbags, but a pro the problem is, is those airbags can be deadly too. Absolutely. So I had a case that came in yesterday, and um, she lost her teeth on the airbag. Wow. Yes. So and another woman whose chest was crushed. So okay. you have the, the airbags and you have to watch that your seat isn't far too far up and things like that. I so see. So it's dangerous. It is very dangerous. Yeah. Would you give your contact information for us? Yes. Okay. And uh, again, the name is Sherry Lab with the Lab Law Firm. And our phone number is 855-HELP-YOU. That's 855-HELP-YOU. That's a great phone number. Thank you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> very, very catchy. What yes, about people you. who um, have family members in nursing homes? Right. What kind of cases do you get from that? I know that a lot of times, I know of a lot of friends myself oh, who have had family members that weren't quite treated right. Right, what, right. What are some of the things that people should look for if their family is in a nursing home? Well, th there is neglect of the patients that mm -hmm. can happen. And so when you go in and you start seeing bruises, um, they're in bed too long, you'll see more bed sores than normal. Um, things like that. What you want to try to do is get a doctor in there to evaluate them and things like that. But mm -hmm. if you see a, a quick deterioration of them, but there's cases, broken bones, you'll see people that fall out of bed and the sides of the bed should be up and things mm -hmm. like that. So it's very serious and unfortunately it's a very common thing in our environment right now and as, as we start to age more and more and the, the population of elderly people is expanding right now. So mm -hmm. it's, I think, I believe that it's going to be happening more and more. So right. over-medicated, that, that can be something too. Right. They're giving too much medication than they need. Right. So, so if you have a question for Ms. Lobb, Attorney Lobb, you can call 313-868-0342. 313 What about um, when you're working with... Uh, you do criminal defense as well? Correct, yes. And um, the young people, I find that there are a lot of crimes that are happening with young people today. And if yes. uh, a mother, or, uh, especially single moms, mm. I know a lot of single moms who their young people are 16, 17, 18 years old. And it seems to be a lot going on now with a lot of things that goes on in the street. Right. Do you find that your clients now are a lot younger, you know, and you defend younger um, young people as well younger individuals yeah. i think that 
the society right now, unfortunately, we're not protecting the children. Um, and I think that as, as a community, we can do a lot more for them. And I think, and I was a single mom for a very long time, and I, and I think that it's difficult for us because we have to work and we also have to provide right. for the children, you know, mentally provide for the children as well right. and set good examples for them. And I think it's hard uh, when we're not home and we're, and we're unable to, to do that for the kids. But I think that if we could provide as a community sort of outreach programs and things like that, to have some stability churches are always wonderful and we also um, do do a lot of pro bono work for churches as well so um, I will right now we have three churches that we do a lot of pro bono work for which is nice um we had a church that had um, a deteriorated roof and we helped them um, with that contract and and we handled the case for them for free oh, okay. so there are a lot of things that we do and 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 can get into the congregation and help um, mentor children and okay. I think that's I think that's nice to be able to do for the community as absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And when you give back, you seem to be blessed in receiving I know, right? more. It's so, so true. <laughs> I think it's wonderful that you it guys is. actually do give back to the community. It is. Oh, we love to. We love to do that. That is great. What about um, senior abuse? I know a couple of seniors who their family believe that they're being abused by another family member. And I know sometimes that's a difficult area for people to right. really even consider. Right, Do you right. handle cases like that? Well, that would be something where they should call the police department. First. Uh, yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. And then and then sort of go from there. And then they can also give us a call to see if there's a civil lawsuit. But we don't, um, w the, the prosecutor's office will handle that abuse. The civil is just about money. Okay. All right. So... Um, but we're happy to give any kind of legal advice we can. I have an attorney that works for me that used to be a prosecutor for Wayne County. So he knows sort of how to handle all that and what avenue they can take and things like that. So. And if someone gives you a call, what are the first steps um, when it comes to coming to you and your dad uh, okay. to, to right. be an attorney? Well, actually, all phone calls come to me first. So okay. you're always guaranteed to speak with an attorney no matter what time you call cause it, because the phone actually rings right to my cell phone. And I want to be the first person that's in contact because one thing is when you find out we have five other attorneys that work for us, mm -hmm. a lot of times, though, if they take the call, they'll still come to me and they are not making judgment calls that I could or my father could make. So and and I feel that if they're going to bond with the law firm and be, we're a family environment, my mom also works for the law firm, my husband works for the law firm and it's a family environment. There are 17 people. Uh, but a lot of the employees have been there for a while and things. And I just feel that if they get to know me, they're going to feel more comfortable. And then I can provide the type of assistance that they're going to need. That is wonderful. So, yes. Would you give your contact information again in your location? Uh, yes, it is um, Sherry Lab at the Lab Law Firm. And our website is actually thelablawfirm.com. And my email is sherrylab at thelablawfirm.com. And our phone number is 855 help you that's 855 help you and remember if you call I will answer the phone and try to help you the best that I can and our address we are located at 30555 Southfield Road Suite 440 in Southfield Michigan right next to the Target building that is wonderful and when you talk about um, when we want to come to an attorney and the first step is to basically give you a call what kind of information should we have available when we're talking to you for the first time oh certainly um one is i do want to let everyone know that it is a free consultation mm -hmm. so even on the phone that is all free and then we have you come in and i'll ask you to bring what documents it depends on the case so if you have an auto accident for example i'm going to ask you to bring with you a driver's license or state id health insurance card and that's just so we can let your health insurance carrier know if you've been in an accident and also um, the police report number, any hospital discharge records, um, proof of insurance if you have it. But again, this isn't all necessary. Mostly I can go all by whatever I can, all the details I can ask about the accident because we do have people who were passengers who weren't buckled, who were thrown out of the window and have zero memory of the accident. And oh. we're able to investigate and find everything out. 
Okay. So as long as I know some details, what, what hospital they went to and things like that, I'll be able to investigate and piece everything together from there. Um, if it's a medical malpractice case or a nursing home case, elder abuse, we're going to want to see the medical records. So we can determine if we think that someone has breached what we call the standard of care. That is great. Mm -hmm. So with the medical malpractice, how has the laws changed? Um, I noticed that there was a case where a child um, had went to a hospital and right. was sent back home and actually passed, passed away. away. Right. And she won the case, um, right. and it was quite a bit of money, $5 million right. or something. Right. Right. But the law states now yeah, that she could only get 200000 or 300000 yes. What is there, that? There are caps on mm -hmm. medical malpractice. I actually don't personally practice that. Mm -hmm. My father handles all the medical malpractice cases. So um, he would definitely be the one to go over and ask what all the caps are. But yes, there are caps on that. Meaning, what is a cap? A cap is where you can only receive so much money. We're actually capped out. In auto cases, for example, if you, have, um, if you miss time off work, they actually pay three years of your lost wages at 85% mm -hmm. of what you make an hour. So let's say you made ten dollars an hour, you're going to receive 85% of that no matter what. They don't get involved with taxes or things like that. Okay, so mm -hmm. which is a nice thing, but there are caps. There's caps on a lot of things. So um, what's nice is there was supposed to be a no fault um, reform going on right. that actually did not pass. So we're all we were all relieved because some of the things, for example, I have four little kids, and if we were in a, a horrific car accident, we would only be able to receive so much money. And the caps were there were very low caps, mm -hmm. and I'm we're, we're blessed that that didn't happen because we want to make sure that. You know, if something, God forbid, ever happened, that you're covered and you have enough money because now you have to take time off work to care for your child if right. they're injured and things like that. And unfortunately, with that law, we wouldn't have been able to do that. That, so, that is yeah. great. I didn't understand is, the law. I or, know. It's, it was a well, lot. <laughs> it sounds like it. What yeah. about workman's comp? Oh, so workers' comp, yes, I practiced that um, for quite a long time. Um, I do kind of always say it's a difficult arena to be in, um, meaning that it it takes anywhere from 18 to 24 months for your case to settle on average and which is much slower than in an auto accident and malpractice cases and it's the court system that you're in it's separate if you're in if you file a medical malpractice or an auto accident you're in circuit court but in workers comp they have their own court system mm -hmm. and the judges they don't have quite the timeline that the circuit court judges have to follow so it does the delay is quite long which it can wear on the psyche of people. So it is it is a very sad area for people to be in because now they can no longer work, but their case takes so long before they can get money. It's it almost devastates the person. So it's very it's quite sad to see someone go through it. Right, I can imagine. Right. And what about the sexual harassment um, <laughs> cases that are going on right now in Hollywood? Oh, gosh, I was just reading about that when you <laughs> walked in. Um, right, I think uh, we actually have a sexual harassment case that um, we had just signed up, and it was a, a, a physical, th or a, no, it was a um, personal trainer at uh, a gym. Okay. And I think that as a female, um, you know, I have a hard time with it, and especially because it happened to me when I was younger, mm -hmm. and I have a hard time um, trying to think that nothing really happened because right. I think I don't think most females will lie about that. I think, sure, of course, there might be some, but I don't believe that that's the case, and I don't believe that men should, you know, willingly be able to do that to women when we don't want them to. So. Absolutely, and are those cases hard to win? Well, I keep in mind most cases settle. Right. Okay. So you're talking about they settle. These are civil cases, so they settle for dollar amounts. The ones where we would be involved is a civil case. But then the prosecutor's office can also file charges for a criminal case as well. So oh, that'll wow. definitely be two, two different. You'll be in two different courts under that because it's a criminal act to sexually assault somebody, but you can also sue them for money damages. That's good information. Isn't to it? Have. I know, right? It really yes. So, I mean, you have to make sure they're collectible. You can always get a judgment, but right. then are they collectible? Right. right. I see. So, yeah. And what kind of things um, are off limits? I mean, if someone just uh, compliments on how you look every day, that's not sexual harassment. Right. What, kind exactly. of things, what are some of the examples of what they should look out for? Right. You're, you're going to actually see someone physically touch you in an unwanted. We, we have the right to our bodies. Mm -hmm. Right. And we right. have the right for someone to not touch us unless we consent to it. Right. So if you're going to see someone touching you in an inappropriate way, a lot of the cases I've seen were fondling 
cases where um, you know they might have touched the rear end or things like that. So yeah. it's going to be some sort of unwanted um, touching of the body. And those are the cases I'm sure that are, are easier to win if it's a right. touching, but just in talking to someone and saying some things that are are not appropriate that's not necessarily um well it depends so if you're at work there there are work um laws employment laws where people can't have there can't be a sexual uh, harassment case in work so those are a little bit there's more laws governing that right. so if we're in a work environment and someone says that and i feel that I, i'm being violated then you can actually sue and then it goes into the discovery process and things like that in terms of did the employer know did you know what did the employee do and things like that so and how was it handled by upper management right. so those are some other things that will play into the to the allegations that so. is wonderful and no, there's no. so much of it going I, on right I know, now i know it's so sad yeah it's it's as women i it's you don't want to hear about it you know but then we also have to help the people that have been injured by it absolutely so. And yeah. then for all the years and the cases that are in the, in the uh, news right now, right. how many years it goes back, it's like amazing. Oh, I and I understand if you don't want to ruin your career and this is the person that can really help you, right. I understand where you may or may not say anything, but wow, everybody's coming out. I think there's over 60. I don't know. It's, it's a lot, It's, right? quite, it's, it's <laughs> I know. quite a few now. It is. It is. I think there'll be a lot more, actually. Absolutely. Right. Give your contact information again. I want to okay. get, want you to give it out as often as we can because okay. there are a lot of people out there that may or may not think they have a case. That's you know, right. so it's important that they understand that they can give you a call. Right, and you can call us for free at eight five five help you, and just call. I can determine if you have a case or not, and if I can't help you, I'll get you to the person that would be able to help you. That is great. Again, thank you. Thank 855 you. help you. And again, we're located in Southfield, Michigan, and our address is 30555 Southfield Road, Suite 440, Southfield, Michigan. And our website is theloblawfirm.com. And on that website, you'll find a lot of information for us. So if you search the Lab Law Firm, you can search all, um, all of the information on the internet, internet about us as well. Great. I'm trying to touch on as many subjects as possible yeah, so certainly. it could really uh, draw someone's mind about if they're going through something. Right. What about dog bites? Yeah, so um, dog bites are, are always, they're, they're always really good cases. I actually, my first trial I ever did was a, a postal worker who um, the dog bit her, which actually it didn't really bite her, which was great, but I won the case. Okay. It, it bit her bag that she had with all the mail in it, mm -hmm. but his tooth went through the bag and did scratch her, but didn't bite her. Oh, okay. So that was my first case, and I was very happy that uh. I won that as well. So that was nice. Wow. And, um, but dog bites, um, I know I actually, when I was five years old, I was bit by a dog on my face. He actually took off, and my parents still have photos, took an entire hole out of my face which healed fine um, but my dad was in law school and represented me on that case and was able to get um, some money off that so I always thought that was funny and I always thought I wonder if he used it to <laughs> for me when I went to law school or if right. he used it in his law school which I'm sure he did him but um, uh, those those cases we, we have to make sure that our dog is on a leash and if our dog does have tendencies to hurt or injure people, um, we have to take extra precaution of our dog. So if you ever have been bit by a dog, just make sure you call 855-HELP-YOU. And also call the local um, animal shelter too to make sure that you report it as well, or the police department to make sure you report it and make sure that you get to the hospital if you need stitches and things like that. Um, we'll, we'll make sure that the hospital bills do get included in that, as well as um, another thing to touch on is if you're in an auto accident, never be afraid to call the ambulance. Uh, auto insurance companies will also pay for that ambulance ride, and I know it can be life and death Right. on the ambulance so people want to make sure i just want them to understand their medical bills are covered through the auto insurance carrier and that's a lifetime benefit so they want to make sure that they get the proper care that they need oh okay yes um there's a situation that i'm familiar with that there was a tree with all the storms that are going on right so there's a tree in a neighbor's yard mm -hmm. that lightning struck yes and it took the sidewalk up of yeah. um, my neighbor down the street and so which uh, property owner is responsible for what the tree has done? Is it the right. owner of the home who has the damage or the person who the tree? 
Well, interesting you say that too, because if it damaged the sidewalk, I would need to know who owns the sidewalk, because chances are the city owns the sidewalk, and then the city is just going to be liable to come fix it. It's right? in the driveway, yeah. so I don't know okay. if that's on our property. Oh, if it's the driveway, yeah. yeah. Um, well, the person who, who the tr property was on needs to fix it, and then the people who it happened to that had the damage, they would call their homeowners, oh, okay. and they would have to make the claim through their homeowners. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but but then the the people whose tree it was, they have to remove the tree. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'll make sure I have to tell yes, her. Yes, definitely, um, definitely. Because that's the situation with all the storms that are oh, happening. Oh, I know. That yeah, right. And as winter comes, and if we don't remove our dead trees out of our yard, which it can always be a, a liability as well. Right. So I mean, I had a gentleman who a tree fell, and hit their electrical line, and mm -hmm. he didn't know it, and he was loading. Um, a bicycle up and hit it and was electrocuted wow. so it's can the th it, things like this can happen because of the storms that we have so and and as it relates to storms and kind of reminds me of all the hurricanes that have hit as well um, yeah. and then made me think of the California fires keep in mind too if you have a house fire and your homeowner's insurance company is not covering you for the damage mm -hmm. or you have a house theft mm -hmm. that's also a case so oh. please call 855 help you so we can help you. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep, that's that's another case. So I've I have several cases where that has happened house thefts. Okay. And you claim, you know, all the jewelry, the clothes, the TV, the computers that were gone, things like that. Mm -hmm. And the insurance company always has a way of denying these claims. Well, okay. You want to call us mm -hmm. because we can help. So you would sue the insurance company. Correct. Yes. 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 Oh, wow, that's and good information yes, to know. Yes, yes. No, we have so many of those cases and a lot of house fires. We have restaurant fires and things like that. And the insurance company loves to deny the claims. Right. So we just we make sure that they do what they're supposed to do is really what my job is. Absolutely. So. What about contractors? You know, there's a lot of building going on in the city of Detroit. True, I mean, true. most of the smaller contractors, everybody's busy. Yes, really, exactly. Everybody is busy, but they're not doing a quality job. Right. So if someone out there has had a contractor that didn't do what they were supposed to do, how would they handle that? Definitely. Would they be able to call you as well? Oh, certainly. Yes. Call 855 help you and we'll talk to you about what they're they were supposed to do and uh, what we would want to do is we'd want to look at the contract mm -hmm. so a lot of a lot of information is contained in that contract a lot of times people don't thoroughly read the contract right and and another thing we also um, will handle contracts that if someone wants us to review them and things like that um, we do that on an hourly basis as well okay. again we would have the person come in for a free consultation we can look over everything and determine what the fee amount would be but we can help people with that as well great and if the contractor does the contractor have to be licensed a licensed builder well in you, order? if you hire somebody you want to make sure they're a licensed builder so that's the <laughs> yes. first thing that we check <laughs> yes yes make sure that they're a licensed builder and you can go on michigan's michigan.gov to find that information Great. Give your Great. contact information again. It's good yes. information. Yes. Thanks. It's Sherry Lab, and we're at the lablawfirm.com. Our phone number again is 855 Help You, and we're located at 30555 Suite 440, Southfield, Michigan. And if there are any churches out there that may have um, members that may have different cases, yes. are they able to call you as well? Do you come out and speak to groups yes. as far as about? The legal matters that they may be dealing with yes exactly yes we do we go anywhere and we'll do um one of the other things that i like to do go to brain injury seminars and get up and talk to people um go to churches speak to the congregation and um one of the things that we're doing for one of the churches that we do some pro bono work is we're going to be in there on one of their days where they have everyone there and mm -hmm. um their congregation is present and i think it's a food drive that they're having that we're going to um, be there and present to help anyone talk about legal issues that is great because yeah. it's so important now especially and yes. especially with seniors I work right. with a lot of seniors and a lot of them have situations that they believe that they need an attorney yes definitely. but not really sure right of they, course there's a lot of landlord tenant issues too and evictions and things like that and and I want to be very clear too when I bring up the landlord tenant uh, slip and falls have the cases have so that has sort has turned on us and they've become more and more difficult especially if it's a slip and fall on ice mm -hmm. uh, I think the Supreme Court's wording was 
uh, if if you uh, if you live in Michigan, you should know there's ice. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> was the word okay? Um, but in landlord tenant situations, they're always those are always good viable cases because a landlord can't exempt himself from providing a safe environment for the tenant. Really? Again, um, we've had cases where the people have walked out onto their porch, fell through their porch, and broke their leg. Uh, so there are these they are supposed to maintain that property in good repair. Absolutely. So those are always really good cases. Um, other cases we can get tenants out of the contract, out of the lease, so that they can move because they can't live there. It's not safe to live there. So All things right. like that, we can help with that as well. That is great. So yes. would the landlord be responsible for ICE if there's a tenant there as well? Well, they have to salt. The landlord, the landlord has to salt. So any good landlord tenant is a very, you were held, you actually are in a better situation if you're a landlord tenant situation. If you're a tenant. Right, instead yes. of the landlord. Yes, so, or for example, like being on a business premises. So if we go to a restaurant and we slip and fall, they're not, ex they, un unfortunately, the case is kind of turned against us. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, there is, the, the law states that if we live in Michigan, we should know. And even if it's snow with ice underneath it, we should have known there was ice underneath that snow. So. Interesting, mm -hmm. interesting. Yep. Yeah. Well, Sherry, it has been a pleasure interviewing you. you. Would you give your contact information yes. again? And I want everyone yes. out there to remember some of the things that she talked about and give yes. them a call. Thank you. Yes, it is 855-HELP-YOU. Again, it's Sherry Lab at thelablawfirm.com, 30555 Southfield Road, Suite 440, Southfield, Michigan. And again, the phone number, please give us a call at 855-HELP-YOU. Thank that you. is fantastic. You have been watching Exposé Under the Sun. I'm Sharon Dumas, and we'll see you next week.